I'm Davey the Good with Prepper Advantage, and I'm standing here with a pink ladder. You may ask yourself, why is he standing there with a pink ladder? I'm standing here with a pink ladder because today we're going to talk about making simple trellises. And I'm talking so simple as to be completely and utterly redneck, yet completely functional for supporting your vegetables. Now this is just a piece of junk that we found in a house. I planted a couple of climbing vines down here, which I don't expect most of you guys to recognize. They are Dioscoria bulbifera. You can look it up, Dioscoria bulbifera vines. And this is the type with an edible bulbil. So bust out your thesaurus. And I'm gonna just lean this right here on this trellis that I made previously. And when my Dioscoria bulbifera emerge from the ground, they will find it and work their way up to this trellis. Now let me talk about this trellis. This is not my proudest trellis. This is actually the worst looking trellis that I think I've ever made in my life. It's 100% fair trade, recycled materials, organic, made without slave labor, and um, it's, it's terrible. Now you guys can probably tell me why it's terrible. Not just because it's ugly, because that doesn't necessarily mean something is terrible. That's what my mom always told me when I was little. This thing is not right because the strings are not running properly on it. So I'm going to tell you why it looks like this. Here was my original plan. Make two teepees of sticks. Making a teepee of sticks is easy and it's very stable. If you've got three points like that, three TP, it is going to be strong. It's actually going to do a good job uh, for a support. If you have two, it can go this way or that way. But if you have three, it, do, it won't, won't fall over. So you make a TP and then I put a stick across the center. And then my idea was, all I'm going to do is start running some lines down to the ground maybe put a support stick in the middle. Then one of my neighbors came over. And uh, I, I don't know him all that well, but he's a farmer. And he said, this is the way I would do it. And he started doing some stuff. And I was like, I'm not sure. I think I would probably do it like this. So we ended up uh, both working on it at the same time. And it ended up with kind of a mess. The beans are going to climb it. They're going to do OK. But don't make trellises that look like this. Just make a couple of teepees and stick a cross piece on it. For goodness sakes, it doesn't have to be this like, this looks like an old sailing ship. And the beans aren't gonna care. They're gonna find their way up, but it's not actually logical the way it was built. So completely ignore the way this trellis was built, except for the teepees and the middle bed. And just assume I built the most beautiful Pinterest trellis that you've ever seen. Speaking of that, let me show you the most beautiful Pinterest trellis that you've ever seen. This baby is gorgeous. All I did to make this one, which is actually quite stable, all I did to make this one here is to hammer in three pieces of rebar. Piece of rebar here, you hammer it far enough into the ground and it's strong. And then I made a little picket down at the bottom here. You can see this, this is my little picket. This is another piece of rebar, which is actually about a two footer which I hammered all the way into the ground. You get yourself a, one of those hammers with a big head on it and a short handle, hammer it right into the ground. And then this is my support. This is paracord. The paracord ties at the bottom and ties up here and gives this a lot of extra support. So it keeps the tension up because once the vines grow along it, they're gonna start pulling it down. Now, these lines are not the most important lines. These are just strings. All these are gonna do is direct the vines up to the top. So when the vines find them and they start going up to the top, they'll reach here. This isn't gonna go anywhere because we really tied this sucker down and paracord is good for like 500 pounds of pressure. So even if I, even if I wasn't, you know, a little neurotic about it, uh, I probably, I mean, I, I almost could have ran paracord the whole way, but it makes sense to kind of have a, a middle here because if you go over too long a span, you really get sagged towards the center. So even though it's technically strong enough, there's probably no way that I could have tensed up, you know, raised the tension on the paracord high enough to make 
this whole length and have it actually look kind of good by the time it got to the end. Rebar is awesome for using for trellises because all you have to do is hammer it into the ground and it lasts a long, long time. So I have a big pile of it right here. I get the bent and weird looking pieces that they have at the hardware store and I get them on sale. And then I cut what I want out of them. So this trellis right here is a super easy trellis for plants that are going straight up. In this case, this is Dioscoria alata. I know, I know, I'm doing it again. That's Latin, it's Latin. And you, you hoped you never have to do Latin again, right? But Dioscoria alata is actually the African yam is not related to sweet potato at all. It's a completely different species. It's a climbing vine. It makes a big root underneath the ground. So this is uh, the African yam, also known as the greater yam, Dioscoria alata, or the water yam. And they'll grow up here. They'll support themselves. They'll have leaves all through the season. And then I just gotta pull these. All I did was lay these pieces of scrap wood on the ground as a support to hold the strings so they don't go anywhere. And then once the vines climb up here and reach here, this string isn't even important anymore. They're gonna grab on here and then they're not going anywhere. That's another simple way you can build a trellis. It's not pretty, but it works. Here's another teepee, but this is kind of an extended teepee. This one is a messy teepee because I had these weird gnarly sticks and I was trying to make it look, you know, shabby chic or something like that. And um, so it just kind of ended up looking shabby. But it works, it's very solid, and it's gonna be covered with green vines soon because down here I have a perennial cucumber known as Cocinia grandis, which is already starting to climb. I put the root down here inside of this old sink. You know, I, th I have everything in my garden, including the kitchen sink. And this is gonna climb up here and I'm just gonna keep kind of looping it and letting it fall over this. But this is super stable. This isn't going anywhere. I made a teepee and then I added the more the extra pieces into it. So I've got more points where this thing is gonna make a lot of vines and I'll just keep sending vines out and letting them fall over and sending them out and letting them fall over. And if they start to go too far, I'll probably make another teepee and then put a line to it or something like that. And then uh, this thing is just gonna cover all over the place. So here's a, here's a real simple teepee, container garden, teepee over the top of it made from sticks. It costs nothing except for the paracord. That's dirt cheap and shabby. Remember, your plants are not as picky about aesthetics as you are. They don't care. They can't actually see. Here is the other little bit of ladder from an old rotten bed that we found. And this one is here for this bean vine, which is down here. And then there is another Dioscoria bulbifera down here, which is gonna pop out of the ground at some point, lose dormancy. And then I'm doing something a little different and I'm sending it right up into the tree. This, these vines can climb the tree as much as they want and grow straight up there, which brings up something that is also very useful. Trees can be used as trellises. Now the problem, obviously, is that the trees produce a lot of shade and that the trees are also, they have their own root zone and they compete for resources with whatever you plant at the base of them. However, you can top a tree off so you've got a trash tree growing in your yard, right? Like you got a sweet gum tree. It's like this big around, it's been growing in that corner, you decide you're gonna take it down. Don't take it all the way down. I used to grow yams around the base of a sweet gum tree. The sweet gum tree was about this tall. When I cut it off, I just cut the top of it off. It started to grow new branches, I cut those off. So it would kind of grow a little bit and it would live and it wouldn't die, but it never got a big canopy because I kept topping it off every season. And I planted yams around the base of it and I let them climb the tree. And so I just kind of directed them up to the base of the tree and they would created this big, messy, it looked like a yam tree. It was like a pillar of yam vines coming out of the ground with a few sweet gum tree leaves sticking out of the top. So it was enough for it to stay alive. I never had to cut another stick and stick it in the ground. I never had to worry about it falling over because it had its own root system. That trellis was a great trellis. It was a living trellis. If you have a tree like this one and you wanted to grow beans around it, you could also take little lines, run them down to the ground, plant beans at the base of each one and just let them climb up towards the center of the tree and use the tree as the center point, kind of a bean uh, string teepee. Thinking along those same lines, outside of the box, you can use your fences as trellises. I've seen cucumbers and I even, you know, cantaloupes and things like that growing on fences. They'll grow nicely on a fence, so you make your beds along the bottom of the fence, let the fence serve as a trellis, 
you might as well. Um, one of my readers sent in pictures of some trellises that he built along the sides of his sidewalk. There's fantastic trellises, so his entire sidewalk is lined with bean trellises leading up to the front of this house, and he strung Christmas lights inside just because it was awesome. So Marvelous Mark did that. Nice work. Um, and finally, a really great trellis is uh, if you can get those cattle panels, and I would make teepees with them like this, take one flat piece along the side, zip tie them together at the top. If you just zip tie them like this, they're kind of shaky, but if you take end pieces and stick them on there or a little extra support, they get very, very strong and it's like a little house. And then you can plant your beans and yams and uh, whatever else you're going to grow on it, cucumbers, and let them grow over it. And it's very strong and they last for years and years and years and years and years. And you get tired of it in the garden, you break the zip ties, you move it to another spot. Say you want to rotate your crops, you might grow potatoes here one year, throw your trellises up the next year, grow some cucumbers, take the trellises, move them to another bed. It's really easy, they're reusable, they last a really long time, and they're not that expensive. You can get like an 18 footer for 20 bucks or something like that. So check that out, cattle panels. And Start thinking outside of the box. If you've got string, you got some sticks, you got some rebar, there's certainly something. I used an old bed frame once for a trellis. It may look trashy, but again, the plants don't have eyes. Your neighbors do though, so make sure you don't do it in the front yard. Thanks for watching. I'm David the Good for Prepper Advantage.